On today's podcast, you'll learn some different ways of saying tired so that you can improve your vocabulary and take your English to the next level. Welcome to Aprender Inglés with Reza and Craig. Hello, and if you're a new listener to the podcast, you're very, very welcome. My name's Craig. And my name's Reza. And with nearly 50 years of teaching English between us, Reza and I will help you improve your English and take it to the next level. How are you, Reza? To be honest, Craig, I'm, I'm a bit burnt out. You're burnt out? Yeah. Are you? Why is that? I've had a lot of work recently, a lot of corrections of writings to do, a lot of traveling around, and I feel a bit burnt out. I'm sorry to hear that. It's not the end of the world. I haven't been burnt, listeners. I haven't been in a fire. I'm just saying that I'm very tired. I'm burnt out. Craig, I know I'm not the only one who's tired because they've been really busy. What have you been up to exactly? Yeah, I'm feeling a bit drowsy, a bit tired as well. I've been hard at work on the B2 first course. We've got a group of students testing it with me at the moment. They're doing beta testing and it's going really well. They're a lovely, lovely group and I'm looking forward to launching it to everybody within the next two weeks or so. So if you are listening to this in the future, the best way to find out about the course is to sign up for our newsletter at inglespodcast.com and all the latest news and information will be sent out to you in the newsletter. But yeah, it's um, quite intensive with the writing and everything that's involved in the course, but I am enjoying it. It's, it's very, very good. This week, as you probably guessed, we're going to be talking about some different ways of expressing how tired you feel. And we'll do that a bit later in the podcast. But first, Reza, we've got a voice message from Ebiana from Argentina. Hello, Reza. Hello, Craig. How are you? You have worked a lot. You have recorded 400 of podcasts. They are amazing and very often with a nice sense of humor. It seems to be that you really enjoy being podcasters. Your work hooked and made us really alcoholics. Cheers and please carry on sharing all your good ideas with us. Stay safe. Bye bye. Eviana from Argentina. Thank you, Ebian. It was really good to hear from you all the way from Argentina. And we're really happy that you're enjoying the podcasts. Any comments, Reza? Thanks very much, Ebian. It was a lovely message. And I really thought you'd great pronunciation. Yeah. And thanks for appreciating our nice sense of humor, as you call it. One small thing I want to focus on, Ebian, from your message. You said you have recorded 400 of podcasts. No of, better to say 400 podcasts. So you've recorded 400 podcasts. And thank you for being an alcoholic. Reza, for our new listeners, what is an alcoholic? It's not a person who drinks alcohol, is it? No, unfortunately, you don't get the, the benefits of the alcohol and that an alcoholic gets before they get the drawbacks, the side effects. The hangover. <laughs> the hangover, the resac, yeah, the hangover. But what you do get is, uh, well, to learn a lot of English, hopefully, because an alcoholic, A-I-R-C, alcoholic, is someone who is addicted to A-I-R-C, Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. So we call regular listeners who never miss an episode alcoholics. Speaking of alcoholics, we received an email from another alcoholic, Yolanda, Yolanda Marti, who is a long-time listener and good friend of the show. And she wrote an email commenting on our episode about disability, which was episode 397. If you'd like to listen, go to englishpodcast.com slash 397. Now, Yolanda is uh, sight-impaired, and I'd like you to read the email and, and her comments, please, Reza. 
Yes, I really enjoyed getting this email. It's really nice to know that um, we have a genuine effect on people. Here's what she writes. Thank you for talking about disability. In my case, as a blind person, I don't mind being identified in this way. I usually refer to us as blind or visually impaired or partial vision. I can do most of the exercises of the cuaderno de inglés. Impossible to choose between different images of basic level, for example. Yeah, I know what she means. In the cuaderno that we send from La Mención del Inglés every month, there are some images where you have to choose a description from a drop-down menu. So uh, I will speak to my partner Lewis and see if we can improve that for you Yolanda those basic exercises she continues the screen reader lets me navigate through the screen and yes the description of images is essential for us and also the use of html and css on the web programming related to series or films in english in my opinion if you can't see the subtitles, the best thing is to follow them with a Braille display. Oh, right. Uh, interesting. Yeah. As you can hear the dialogues and accent at the same time you read the translation, if you need it. I prefer to follow your recommendation, first in Spanish and afterwards in English, with a Braille display too. This way, I know the plot. Yep. Yeah. That's a good piece of advice there. Thank you very much, Yolanda. And it was really nice to hear from you again. Yes, thanks so much, Yolanda. Now, moving to the main focus of today's podcast, speaking about feeling tired or being tired and different ways, mainly adjectives of describing this feeling of tired. Now, we said at the beginning, Reza, didn't we, that we were feeling a little bit tired. That's a very common expression to say you're feeling a bit tired or a little bit tired yes another way you could say that is sleepy so if you're sleepy you're not absolutely devastated really 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 tired but you're you're tired you know going to bed would be nice you're sleepy what time do you usually get sleepy in the evenings it varies but Usually, I feel sleepy around about half 11, midnight. What about you? Maybe a bit earlier, because I think I'm a couple of years older than you, so that makes sense. Probably about 11. <laughs> I've passed 10, 11. <laughs> I'm feeling sleepy. Another adjective you could use to describe feeling tired is fatigued. F-A-T-I-G-U-E-D. Now, don't be confused by the word fat or the fat at the beginning it's nothing to do with being overweight the noun is fatigue and you can say you suffer from fatigue or you just feel fatigued you feel tired you are fatigued between fatigued and sleepy craig which one would you use more in an everyday conversation definitely sleepy definitely yeah it's much more common yeah, to me, fatigue sounds more formal. Mm -hmm. It's the sort of thing you might hear a doctor use, right? Yeah, and I think I might hear in conversational English, I suffer from fatigue or she suffers from fatigue, rather than using the adjective, he's fatigued. That sounds strange to me. Now, the next word is a word that Craig used at the start of the episode. He said he felt drowsy. I'll spell that for you. D-R-O-W-S-Y, drowsy. If you feel drowsy, that means you feel a little bit tired. And quite often we use the word drowsy when we feel tired in the middle of the day rather than in the evening. You can feel drowsy in the evening, of course, but imagine, say, you drank a little glass of wine at midday and it's gone to your head. You might say, oh, I, I, I feel a bit, a bit sleepy now, a bit drowsy. Just slightly sleepy in the middle of the day. You said it's gone to my head. What does that expression mean? Yeah, if alcohol goes to your head, 
it's having the effect uh, that alcohol does, making you feel drowsy, making you feel a bit tired, losing the sharpness of your senses a bit. I often feel drowsy after lunch, even without drinking alcohol. I just feel drowsy round about siesta time. A similar expression is groggy, G-R-O-G-G-Y. Now, you might feel groggy when you've just woken up. Imagine you've had a long siesta for too long, maybe an hour, then you might feel a bit groggy. Also, groggy is used quite commonly with the effect of maybe drugs or alcohol. If you're feeling groggy after a bottle of wine, that's probably not unusual. Yeah, you're you're not thinking clearly and you're groggy. In fact, I can tell you that the word grog, which is not used much nowadays, but the noun grog is an old-fashioned way of saying alcohol. 200, 300 years ago, sailors, for example, would talk about, hey, fellas, let's go to the the port and get some grog to get some alcohol, get their rum and their beer, etc., their grog. And then afterwards, of course, they felt groggy after they drank the grog. So it actually comes from the idea of feeling sleepy after drinking alcohol. Often also doctors use this word after the effects of anesthetics. When you wake up, they say, you'll feel a bit groggy after the anesthetics. The effect of the the anesthetic, exactly. Groggy or drowsy, the previous word. Remember, you can see all of these words and expressions in the show notes. Go to inglespodcast.com slash 402, 402, and you'll see a list of these words on the web page. Another adjective is weary, W-E-A-R-Y, which also means a bit tired. Maybe you're fed up. If you're fed up, then you're bored with something, and that makes you feel a bit tired. For example... Reza gave a weary sigh as he corrected his 18th student writing. He was weary because he'd been correcting so many writings. A weary sigh is a common collocation. Yeah, weary often comes associated, as Craig explained, with the idea that something's making you tired. It's not just for no reason. Something has made you tired. That's why you're like, you feel weary. you The work or whatever you're doing makes you feel weary. Now, long-time listeners of the podcast, alcoholics, will know that Reza has a wide knowledge of different flags. But Reza, what does the word flagging mean? Is it connected to flags? It could be, but not in this episode. When we use the adjective flagging, spelt F-L-A-G-G-I-N-G, a lot of G's in that word, right? Flagging. It means that you're beginning to slow down because you're tired. You can't keep up the same rhythm, the same pace, because you're tired. You're flagging. You, The tiredness is making you slow down. And the verb is to flag. So you could also say, at the end of the day, I started to flag. I started to lose energy and become tired. Don't confuse flagging with an A, with flogging, with an O, which is hitting someone with a rope in sadomasochism, for example. The word flagging is interesting in this group because it's the only one that we could think of with ING. That's true. Many others are past participles, ED, such as fatigued, that we've already mentioned, or a lot also end with a Y, have you noticed? Drowsy, groggy, weary, sleepy. So flagging is a bit unusual in that it ends with ing. Another adjective you could use for feeling tired is lethargic. Lethargic, L-E-T-H-A-R-G-I-C. And I associate this particularly in hot, humid weather. For example, here in Valencia, Spain in July and August, I feel lethargic. I feel very heavy. My body has no energy because it's so hot. The next one is a nice word. I'm sure it's new for many listeners. Sluggish. And you wouldn't guess it unless you saw it in context. Unlike lethargic, you might guess. You wouldn't guess sluggish unless you knew the word slug. So S-L-U-G, slug, is an animal. 
and from that animal we get the adjective sluggish, S-L-U-G-G-I-S-H. In other words, you're acting like a slug. So slugs move really, really slowly. I think in Spanish it's babosa. Babosa, yeah. They do everything really slowly. They barely move. So if you feel sluggish, you're doing everything slowly, probably because you're tired. I'm very, very sluggish in the morning. It takes me at least half an hour to wake up and I need a coffee. And I'm very sluggish when I first get out of bed. In the morning, you get out of bed. But in the evening, I often say I'm ready for bed. That means I'm tired. I feel sleepy. I'm ready to go to sleep. I'm ready for bed. That's a very common expression. Good night. I'm ready for bed. I'll see you in the morning. So all the expressions we've used so far have been for being a little bit tired or normal tired. Now let's move on to those which refer to being very tired. Can you remember at the beginning of this episode, I said I was burnt out. That means really tired, very tired. Can you imagine being burnt? But I'm not really burnt by a flame, but... Everything that I've got, all my energy has been consumed, burnt out, is very tired. Craig, there happen to be another couple of expressions which end with out, aren't there? Yes, they are phrasal verbs, tired out, worn out, and burnt out. And this use of out with these verbs has the idea of completion. It's something that's complete. Other examples that are not connected to being tired, run out, that means there's nothing left, I've run out of beer. To fill out a form is to complete a form, and if something dies out, it stops existing, so it's completely dead. So sometimes out with a phrasal verb means completion, and in this case, these three verbs also mean completely tired. As Reza said, tired out, worn out. If you wear something out, one meaning is you destroy it through use. You wear out your shoes or you wear out your toothbrush. But if you are worn out, that means you're completely tired. You have no energy left. And as Reza said, the same with burnt out. A fire can burn itself out. It finishes burning. But if you are burnt out, you have no energy. Another expression you could use also with past participle, because tired, which ends in ed, is obviously a past participle. But did you notice, listeners, that worn and burnt are also past participles from the phrasal verbs, as Craig said, but they're irregular. So we've got tired out, which is regular, and then we have worn out and burnt out, which are irregular. Get the phrasal verb and put the past participle, worn and burnt. Here's another regular one, ending ed, exhausted. So if you're exhausted, you're really, really tired and you haven't got much energy left. The prefix over means too much. If you're overweight, you are too heavy. If you overwork, you work too much. And unlike teachers, if you're overpaid, you are paid too much. But you can also be overtired. And if you're overtired, that might affect the way you do things, it might be dangerous to drive if you're overtired, you can't think properly, you're mixing your words. So it's just being too tired. It's very extreme if you're overtired. Going back to the idea Craig explained earlier about being tired out, worn out, burnt out, there's nothing left, all your energy is being used. It's a similar idea with the word spent. So you spend money, you also spend energy. So if you say, I'm spent, I'm completely tired out. I've got no energy left because I've spent it all. There's no more energy to use. I'm spent. I was spent after my workout at the gym. There's a sentence I haven't said for a long time. (laughs) It's been a while since I said that. I was completely spent after my gym workout. 
An informal expression for being very tired is knackered. Now, there's a silent K in the word knackered, K-N-A-C-K-E-R-E-D. It's a typically UK British English expression, not very common in America, but definitely in the UK you hear it. And it means completely tired. Now, be careful. It is quite an informal expression. It's not an expression you'd use in a formal situation like a job interview, for example. So be careful where and when you use it. But I'm knackered. Absolutely knackered is a very common expression. If you are a Spanish speaker, you could say hecho polvo. The next expression, yet another past participle, regular, so it ends in ed, is drained. D-R-A-I-N-E-D. To drain means to use up a resource or to use up energy, like your battery gets drained in your mobile phone. For example, if you go around taking lots of photographs and videos very quickly, it's going to drain your battery. There'll be very little energy left very quickly. So if a person feels drained, they've used up nearly all their energy, like a battery, they can't do much now. They're drained. That's how I used to feel after class is sometimes if the class was very demanding, the students asked a lot of questions, I had to think a lot during the lesson. I just felt drained, especially after a long morning with those, remember those four hour classes we had or four and a half hour classes? You felt drained after. An expression you could also use to express extreme tiredness is, I can barely keep my eyes open. I can barely keep my eyes open. Maybe you saw cartoons where the cartoon character has matchsticks or small sticks keeping their eyes open. They're so tired and the, the eyes are red and bloodshot. They can barely keep their eyes open. You could say perhaps that they were dead on their feet. So if I say I'm dead on my feet, it doesn't mean I'm literally dead, that I've stopped living. It's an idiom, so I'm not using the literal, normal meaning of dead. I just mean I'm really, really tired. I'm dead on my feet. Another informal one is to be done in. There are lots, aren't there? Lots of expressions. To be done in, D-O-N-E, and then the preposition in. I'm done in. I'm exhausted. I'm knackered. The next one's an interesting one. It's probably pretty hard to guess. If you didn't know it, you mightn't guess it. Shattered. So it comes from the verb to shatter, S-H-A-T-T-E-R, and then make it past participle, E-D. If you shatter something, you break it up into lots of pieces. So it's now useless. Like if I got a glass and I threw it onto a hard floor, it would probably shatter. The glass would break up into many, 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 many pieces and it would be useless. So if a person is shattered, they are so tired, like a shattered piece of glass, they're now useless. They can't do anything because they're shattered. And that's quite often used with a modifier, isn't it? You'd say, I'm absolutely shattered or I'm totally shattered or maybe I'm completely shattered. Another expression that's quite informal, I'm going to conk out. Another phrasal verb, to conk out. C-O-N-K. Now, if you're driving your car and your car conks out, it stops working. If you conk out, you stop working. You close your eyes, you go to sleep because your body is exhausted. So if you feel like you're going to conk out, that means you are completely knackered, completely tired, and you just need to rest and to sleep. In Spanish, you might say quedarse frito, which is an informal expression in Spanish. So if you're going to conk out, that probably means you're ready to drop. Ready, prepared, ready to drop. To drop, we don't mean that you're going to just collapse on the floor and fall down like that, but it implies drop into bed. So as soon as you get to your bed, you're just going to collapse onto that and sleep. So you're really tired if you're ready to drop. We've had a couple of uh, informal UK British English expressions, like knackered, for example. Let's go the other side of the pond, as they say, across the Atlantic to the US. In American English, you might say, I'm beat. 
B-E-A-T. Now, you probably know to beat someone, the verb, to win a game, then you beat the team, you beat your opponent. But as an adjective, I'm beat means I'm very, very tired in American English. And it's curious, although it probably does come from the verb to beat, you notice that the verb to beat in the normal sense, like let's say in the football match, Brazil beat Spain, yeah? What if it was present perfect? You would say Brazil have beaten Spain, right? It's beat, beat, beaten is the past participle. But in this expression, it isn't beaten. It's beat, curious, right? Yep. You don't say I'm beaten. If you said I'm beaten, it would mean I've lost a competition, right? So it's curious that just for this expression, I'm beat, yeah? it's not beaten, although it probably comes from the verb to beat to be beat like i like i've i've got no more energy no i can't compete i can't fight i've i've like lost the battle with sleep but we don't say beaten for this one we say i'm beat it's curious yeah another quirk we could say an unusual feature of american english because they might say are you done in american english which means are you finished or have you finished so yeah it's probably an americanism where they've changed the the way they use the grammar Another one which you'll hear, but be careful with it, is wasted. W-A-S-T-E is the verb, so add D for past participle, wasted. If you waste something, you use it in a stupid way, or you consume it, and now there's none left. So if a person is wasted, they've, again consumed all their energy so this is a common type of theme isn't it all their energy has been used up now they're wasted but this one not always but craig i would say it's often associated with consuming alcohol or drugs would you say yeah especially when you use it with got when was the last time you got wasted that is obviously not tiredness that's when was the last time you took drugs or had too much to drink going back to the u.s american english tuckered out is an American expression, which means to be very, very tired. Tucker, T-U-C-K-E-R, and then add E-D. Tuckered out, phrasal verb, American expression for being very tired. I like that one. It sounds very old-fashioned American to me. Yeah, like small town, middle America. Yeah, maybe somewhere in deep Texas, you you expect a guy with a cowboy hat maybe to say, hey, I'm tuckered out. You know, do, you, do you remember those old American TV series like The Waltons or Little House on the Prairie and coming in from the fields? Oh, ma'am, I'm completely tuckered out. <laughs> Working all day in the fields, you know? That's what, that's what you would expect to hear that one. Also the next one, Bush. I think that's American, isn't it? Yes, and I've no idea where it comes from. I don't know about the origins because a bush is like a small tree, un arbusto. But I don't know why, but in American English, they sometimes say I'm bushed, B-U-S-H-E-D, to mean I'm really tired. Let's finish with an offensive one from British English. Now, be careful where and when you use this. Shagged, S-H-A-G-G-E-D. Now, the verb to shag is an informal colloquial expression to have sex. If you shag someone, you have sex with them. But if you are shagged, that can mean that you've had sex, but it can also mean that you're completely exhausted. You're really, really tired. I'm shagged or I'm shagged out means I'm completely without energy. But again, it can be offensive. Be careful where you use that one to be shagged. Yeah, and how will you know what the meaning is? I guess it depends on whether... The context, yeah. And also an object, for example, he shagged her. So he and her, two, two people are involved there. He shagged her would mean he had sex with her, right? But he is shagged just means he's tired because no other person was mentioned, right? He is shagged or he feels shagged. He feels very tired, but he shagged her. Ah, they had sex, right? You get it from the context and because there's an object. And maybe it's connected to the feeling of being tired after sex. If you feel shagged then or shagged out, then you're feeling tired in a similar way. The one thing I would say about shagged, you know, it might offend some people, but hey, there, there are worse ways that you could feel tired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like working, for example. 
<laughs> so let's look at a couple of expressions with tired. Obviously, we've mentioned this before. You can be tired. You can feel tired. You can say, I'm tired. You can modify tired by saying, I'm very tired. I'm extremely tired. But you can also use tired when you're talking about things, can't you, Reza? Yes, it's very typical to talk about furniture and decoration and things like that. Here's an example. Our old sofa is looking tired and worn. So we got two expressions there of tiredness. We got tired and we got worn. Our old sofa is looking tired and worn. In other words, it's been used a lot and it's not as good as it used to be. We need to change it. Speaking of that, I think our flat is looking tired. We need to repaint the walls. The walls are looking very tired. And I noticed that when I go around to your flat because it's been recent, fairly recently decorated and painted. And I come back here and I look at our walls and there's some marks and scratches and it's just looking tired. It needs a fresh coat of paint. Craig, apart from actual objects, can you use tired for abstract things? You could, for example, talk about an argument as being old and tired. I could say, Reza, that tired old argument won't convince anyone. It's been used before. Don't use that tired old argument again. Craig, I don't know about you, but I get sick and tired of people jumping the queue. I'm very British in that sense. And it's not ideal to live in, in certain parts of the world. If you are very fussy, very particular about being in a queue, a line of people, and I get sick and tired of people jumping the queue and going in front of me. It makes me sick and tired. What about you? No, me too. I agree 100%. Those two words like to go together, don't they? To be sick and to be tired. Use those together. I'm sick and tired of something. For me, I'm sick and tired of noisy neighbours. Our neighbours are very noisy, and obviously I'm used to living in a flat here in Valencia and not in a house as I lived in in the UK, but I do get sick and tired of the noise because we have neighbours above, below, and both sides of our flat. So when he says he's sick and tired, he's not literally sick. It just means he's fed up. He's had enough. It's, it's too much now. He just wants it to stop. We had the expression to be dead on your feet earlier. You're, you're dead on your feet. You can also be dead tired. And dead in this context means very. So I'm very tired. I'm dead tired. Craig, in fact, in Belfast, and I know in a few places in England as well, in the north of England, some places, it's very common to use dead as an adverb with any adjective you want. Like in Belfast, you'll hear, oh, I'm dead hungry, or I'm dead happy, or... D dead chuffed, dead, dead pleased. Chuffed, yeah. I think also in places maybe like Manchester, the north of England, have you heard people use dead in that way as well? Yeah, yeah. as a modifier. You can also be dog tired which is another modifier to mean very tired, as tired as a dog. I know where that comes from because with Coco, when he's tired and Coco is a dog, there's no way he's going to get up for anything or anyone. So I fully understand that dog tired means very tired. So tired that you're not prepared to wake up. Are you feeling dog tired at the moment, Coco? You can also use the verb to get, which means to become. So to get tired means the process of becoming tired, to become tired. For example, I usually get tired when I've been looking at the screen of my computer for many hours. It makes me tired. I become tired. I get tired. Craig, when I was uh, a kid living with my parents, they would often tire of telling me things. They would say things like, I'm tired of telling you to put your clothes away. I'm tired of telling you to tidy your room, that type of thing. Yeah, it's often used to express annoyance, isn't it? When someone's annoyed with you or you're annoyed with someone. I'm tired of telling you. I'm tired of saying this. Sometimes in the class, Craig, you have to say, I'm tired of telling you to speak in English. Because yes. the students won't do it. Yes, that's, that's often the case, isn't it? Speaking in Spanish too much. I'm tired of telling you not to do that. So we hope you're not tired 
of all of these expressions connected to tired and we hope you're not too weary to share this podcast on social media please let your friends know so that more people can listen to the podcast if you're listening on spotify or another app then please share this episode to one of your friends we'd really appreciate it but now it's your turn to practice your english so how can people do that if they're not too tired well the best way to share some interesting information with us is to leave a voice message so if you go to speakpipe dot com slash English podcast you'll be able to leave an audio message for us to hear and if we get the chance we'll play it back in an episode of the podcast we prefer to get your voice messages so that we know what you sound like and we can help you with your speaking but if you prefer to send us an email you can reach me by email i'm craig c-r-a-i-g at English podcast.com or if you want to write to reza he is at belfast reza R-E-Z-A at gmail.com. Earlier, Craig mentioned his course, but as well as that, there's other material that you can access on store, S-T-O-R-E dot mansioningles.net, material which has been tried and tested over the years by many followers of the Mansion English. And you can also sign up for our Cuaderno de Inglés, the monthly newsletter that's uh, twice a month, actually. And you can sign up for that. We'll, we'll send it to you free by email. And we'd also like to thank everyone who's helping us on the Patreon scheme. If you are a fan of the show or maybe you'd like to get access to recent transcriptions of everything we say you can join our patreon program for a minimum of one dollar twenty per month that's including vat value-added tax and we would love to have you as a patreon sponsor you can go to patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash English podcast for more information and Reza we have a lovely group of people who have recently joined us maybe you could say who they are because unfortunately we can't mention everybody who is supporting us but uh, who are the latest members so these are just the latest not all our sponsors the latest ones are Maria del Carmen de la Torre lovely name I like that Maria del Carmen de la Torre yeah nice isn't it Luciana Schaub or Schwab, I'm not quite sure how to say that. Hokoke, Hokoke, <laughs> yes, twice like that. Hokoke, Hokoke. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> Camila Caputo Saldana Serra, another great name I really like. Jorge Alberto Borda, Eva Taberne, Iris or Iris. I'm not sure if I should say it the, the English way or the Spanish way. Iris RC. Alberto Velasco Niña, Patricio Hernández Huescar, Aden Psicología, and Lander Ochoa Eguilego. Thanks to all of those guys for recently joining the Patreon scheme. Yes, thank you very, very much. On next week's episode, if you haven't been too worn out or burnt out to join us next time, we're going to be speaking about uncountable nouns and expressions of quantity that you can use with uncountable nouns. So please join us for that next time. Until then, have a wonderful week. It's goodbye from Reza. And it's goodbye from Craig. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is See You Later. <laughs>